I'd like to take just a minute to welcome our two lovely ladies who are joining me tonight. Um, on my left is my wife, Julia, and uh, to my right is Sharon Beyer. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but my wife and I, we're, we're giving a free concert tonight to our, our son, who's kind of inside there. So <laughs> we hope he enjoys the music and hope he comes out to be <laughs> a good musician. So. Um, the first piece we're going to play together is uh, a trio by Franz Joseph Haydn. Um, it's called the London Trio in C major. Uh, reason being is it was written around the, the time period up between 1791 and 1794 when Haydn was granted leave from the court of Prince Nicholas Esterhazy in Austria. Um, actually, the prince had just died, so his son had given him a chance to go and do something else instead of writing music all day for the court. And he took three years and went to London, and he had a very successful three years. He wrote many of his uh, most famous symphonies, including his Symphony Number no. 101, which is nicknamed the London Symphony, and this trio. And it was originally written for violin, flute, and cello. So and here we have flute, oboe doubling as the other violin part, and myself again taking the role of the cello. So we hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
The next piece on the program uh, is a sonata by Pergolesi. Um, not really. Um, it's actually been attributed to Pergolesi because during his time he was a little bit more well known than the man who actually wrote it, whose name was Domene Domenico Gallo. Well, that's neither here nor there. The reason that we're playing it is because it actually has a little special place in modern more modern music at least. Um, if any of you out there are fans of Igor Stravinsky's music, you might know he's very known for his avant-garde music, such like the Rite of Spring. But during that time in his life, he and a few other composers went back to the old style of the classical and the Baroque, and he started what was known as a neoclassical style. And he uses the melody from this in one of his very famous uh, pieces, uh, the Pulcinella. And it was music for a ballet, so the opening to his Pulcinella is what we are about to play. Attributed to Pergolesi, really by some guy named Gallo. Thank you. 
The uh, next set of pieces we're going to play is a set of four p uh, pieces, again, from another Baroque suite, this time happening to be the Water Music Suite by George Friedrich Handel, probably one of the most famous compositions that he wrote, what we know him uh, for today, rather than, uh, well, this and maybe music for the Royal Fireworks that he wrote, and the Messiah that we hear every year around this time. Um, this piece, uh, reason why it was called water music. Uh, King James I, not King James, King George I, it's hard to get those guys confused. Um, he commissioned Handel to write this piece of music as he relaxed on the River Thames on the banks while barge after barge after barge of musicians went floating on by. So he liked it so much at its premiere, he told all the musicians to go back and do it again and go back and do it again a third time and the musicians were exhausted but he's the king so his way goes so we're going to play a little bit from that and hopefully these are sort of be recognizable tunes <laughs> Thank you. 
The last piece on our classical set for the program tonight is a rondo by Henry Purcell. It brings us to our oldest piece on the program, written uh, in approximately 1695. And again, well, the reason why it's become more well known and, and still today well known is it was used by Benjamin Britten as the opening melody to his Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, if you're familiar with that piece at all. Um, I actually just recently heard it being used on a movie trailer the other, you know, not that long ago. Very recognizable tune if, if you know it. Um, so, hope you enjoy. Just trying to tie this one back in with the other piece that was borrowed as well. A couple of old Baroque pieces being used anew. The uh, remainder of the program tonight is going to feature selections from the Great American Songbook, um, songs that I hold dear to myself. I have a great sense of nostalgia for, for these songs, especially, you know, the music of George Gershwin and Cole Porter. Um, I'm not going to introduce each one, we're just going to let them fly. Hopefully you'll enjoy them and recognize all of them.
Thank you. 